come in, I come in, I come in, I come in. All the door is open wide. Jesus, he's expecting you. Won't you come inside? I know your heart is aching. Your mind is filled with doubt. Well, you're not too bad to come in, but you're not too good to stay out. Well, I was just a walking by that church one Sunday morning. And I heard some people singing. They were shouting, praise the Lord. Well, I walked a little closer, and I heard those people pray. And I felt somebody touch me, and I heard somebody say, I come in, I come in, I come in, I come in. All the door is open wide. Jesus, he's expecting you. Won't you come inside? I know your heart is burning. Your mind is filled with doubt. Well, you're not too bad to come in, but you're not too good to stay out. Well, there's people who think they've lived so bad that Jesus won't call them home. And there's others who think they've lived their lives without ever doing wrong. Well, listen to me, children. Here's something to think about. Well, you're not too bad to come in, but you're not too good to stay out. I come in, I come in, I come in, I come in. All the door is open wide. Jesus, he's expecting you. Won't you come inside? I know your heart is burning. Your mind is filled with doubt. Well, you're not too bad to come in. No, you're not too bad to come in. I say you're not too bad to come in. But you're not too good to stay out. Oh. Friends, let's rejoice and give thanks today in uh, the sharing of our call to worship, which comes to us from the 86th Psalm. Oh God, in the day of trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, O Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Friends, let's continue to rejoice and give thanks together. Our hymn of praise, Marching to Zion, is found on him, uh, in the hymnal on page 733. Let's stand and join together in singing.
congregation, you may be seated. That as we consider together the life that God has called us to, uh, the invitation that we have all received to turn from our sin, to embrace faith in Jesus Christ, and uh, to follow after the Lord wherever He leads. May God continue to encourage us each one. And part of how God encourages us is in and through the life and fellowship of the church. Um, part of that means when we're together on Sunday mornings, but part of that is that we look forward to other things that are happening in the life of our church. One of the most important uh, ministries and also times of fellowship that our church enjoys happens on Saturday, November the 4th, our fall festival, also known as the our, our uh, charcoal chicken barbecue. And so, um, first of all, this morning, Terry Hicks is managing tickets. So if you have not yet received some tickets for yourself, your family, or if you want to be a uh, part of helping us distribute, please see Terry after the service. And Terry's wife, Karen, has a related announcement to share with us this morning. Okay, fantastic. So, yes, Susie. Okay. So there should not be any shortage of volunteers willing to help slice cake. Um, but but also for, uh, for those of you to think about providing desserts and anyway, just, just being involved. Regardless of whether you consider yourself a skilled laborer in the art of chicken barbecue or not, uh, we have something for you to do and uh, so we'd be delighted to, to have you come and join us. Um, also, some of, uh, some of the other positive news that I want to share is that um, Max Rayner continues his recovery at home, um, but I understand he is starting to venture out some and that he will hope to return back to work uh, on the 1st of November, so that is encouraging news. Uh, we continue to be in prayer for Max's brother, Eric, who will also be having knee surgery here in the not-too-distant future. Um, another thing that we can rejoice and give thanks for as we're celebrating good things here in the life of, our, of the church is uh, that our own Kofi Prempe has uh, celebrated a birthday. So yesterday was Kofi's birthday, and so congratulations, and, and just uh, that, is, that is good for us to be able to celebrate the gift and joy of life. Yes, Tracy. In Christian love, just, you know, for those of you at Elevation Methodist Church, 
we will crush you, okay? <laughs> in Christian love with stuffed animals. Um, but that is, that is a, a, a vital and important ministry, and we'll share more details about the Christmas Closet outreach uh, as that time gets closer. Among some of the folks that we have been in prayer for over uh, the week past, uh, we continue to lift up uh, both Libby Medlin and her husband Jerry and also Ms. Betty Aiken and her family as they are, as they are both at home and uh, continuing their, their care and their growing needs at home. Um, also, we want to be in prayer for Julia Johnson and her daughter Wendy as they are uh, both working with home health care at Julia's home. Mr. Carol Bird spent the week past in the hospital uh, at Betsy Johnson Hospital, and he is home, um, but he is still very much recovering, so prayers for Carol and Wilma Bird and their family. Um, who else might we lift up before the Lord in our prayers? Yes, Janet. Okay, so Jenny Johnson recovering from surgery. Yes, Tony. Oh, my. Okay, so that's Tony Barefoot's niece, Sharon Davis, and a recent diagnosis of colon cancer. Uh, yes, Susie. Okay, for the family of Tony Pre Cresswell, all right. Okay, the family of Martha Parrish. Um, let's see, and, all right. well, we, uh, yes, Jean. Okay, so Courtney Beasley, um, who is going to get some results from some recent scans, and she's been having some orthopedic issues, and so we want to be in prayer for, for her. Uh, we continue to lift up uh, the great number of people that are battling cancer right now. We continue to be in prayer for Mrs. Dunstan, uh, our, our local elementary school principal, Joey Maples, Paula Daniels, Archie Holcomb, Scott Barnes, uh, Sam Price Jr., and Chris, uh, Chris Millers. And uh, friends, who else might we be in prayer for this morning? Well, let's go before the Lord together in prayer then. Jesus, as we gather together this day, we give you thanks for your presence and how, Lord, your spirit accompanies us wherever we go. That, Lord, we pray for faith this day, that we might be reminded and encouraged that there is never truly a time where any of us are alone. You are present with us. And, Lord, as we gather together here in worship this morning, we pray that you will encourage each heart that even as we are aware of the people who are sitting with us, who are sitting near us, Lord, that we would know that you are close and not only, Lord, is it your desire to be close to us, but that you want to live inside of us by faith in every heart here. That, Lord, as we consider the great numbers of people that are sick, uh, Lord, with one circumstance or the other, God, we pray that you will be at work to bring healing and wholeness to those who are sick of body. Lord, we ask that you will encourage the brokenhearted from among us here, Lord, um, both, both within the church sanctuary here this morning, but also, Lord, for those family and friends who may be discouraged uh, in their, their long battles, whether with physical suffering or being brokenhearted, being discouraged, feeling like they have nothing to look forward to. And, Lord, we ask that you will find a way to encourage them and, Lord, that you will perhaps lay upon our own hearts uh, a burden not only to pray, but to reach out. 
to make a phone call, to send a text message, to drop a card in the mail, but to consider who may be feeling alone or down or forgotten today and that, Lord, we might continue to lift them up and encourage them. God, we ask your blessing over the great needs of the earth. We watch the news and uh, we consider the great conflict that continues in Israel, uh, the war that continues there in Eastern Europe and Ukraine. Lord, we know that peace treaties and agreements between men will not be a lasting thing. But God, we do pray for peace. And we pray, Lord, that you will be at work. Lord, reveal yourself uh, in and through the different circumstances of great heartache and suffering in the world, that you might establish your peace in every heart, even as we join our hearts together now in the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Children, let us come get together here for a moment with Preacher Billy. I know we've got some of you here, and we just keep getting smaller and greater in number, but that is okay. That is exciting stuff here. Okay. What do you think? Come here, Hunter. Hmm. All righty. Okay. You know what? Preacher Billy was thinking I have I have such a great surprise for you here this morning children preacher Billy's bag right here okay now is everybody is everybody watching I have a I have a fantastic trick that I'm gonna show you here it comes it's exciting you won't want to miss it look I'm 
You can't see me, can you? You can't. can't, can't. No, no. See, now I'm gone again. Yep. No idea where the preacher is. That's pretty amazing. Yep, it's pretty amazing, children. The invisible preacher. Wow. Did you know? <laughs> I think y'all have played this game before. Sometimes in life, we may play a game where we hide, okay? We may not be able to always see each other. We may have maybe moms or dads or grandparents may leave the room for a little while. But even when we can't see each other Jesus still knows right where we are and even if we're not able even if we're not able to see Jesus face to face this morning one of the things that we can all look forward to is how Jesus will show himself to us through people around us through people at church through our families but there's never a time when we're ever really alone. So now just, just one more time, just so you can say that you've seen what the preacher can do. There, there you go. I know, it's amazing. Yep. All right. Y'all, let's take a minute and let's pray together, okay? Jesus, thank you for being close to us always and help us to think that even if we're sad or we're angry or maybe if we're afraid, that you are still always watching over us. God, thank you for the special people in our lives. Thank you for moms and dads and grandparents, the people that bring us to church, the people that are part of our music ministry or Sunday school. God, thank you for all the ways that we can see you each and every day if we'll just look for you. And we ask your blessing over our day and our time now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, young people, whatever y'all have planned here, if y'all are headed back to sit with your families or you are headed off to Children's Church, but um, if the ushers will come at this time, we will continue in worship this morning through the giving of our tithes and our offerings and the offering of our hearts and lives unto the Lord. travel through this pilgrim land there is a friend who walks with me leads me safely through the sinking sand it is the christ of calvary this would be my prayer dear lord each day to help me do the best i can for i need thy light to guide me day and night blessed jesus hold my hand Blessed Jesus, oh my hand, oh my hand. I yes, need I thee need every, every hour. hour. Through this land is no land. land. Protect me by thy power. power. Hear my feeble plea, oh Lord, 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 look down on me. On me. When I kneel in prayer, I kneel in prayer. Blessed Jesus, oh my hand. Let me travel in the light divine That I may see the blessed way Keep me that I may be holy thine And sing redemption song someday I will be a soldier brave and true And ever firmly take a stand As I onward go and daily meet the foe Blessed Jesus, hold my hand Blessed Jesus, hold my hand, I need thee every hour. Through this land, this pilgrim land, protect me by thy power. Hear my feeble plea, O Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, I kneel in prayer, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. When I 
wander through the valley dim toward the setting of the sun. Lead me safely to a land of rest if I a crown of life have won. I have put my faith in thee, dear Lord, that I may reach the golden strand. There's no other friend on whom I can depend. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. I am very through this land is no land. land. Protect Fire. me by the send your Holy Spirit anew upon all of us gathered here that Lord you by the power of your Holy Spirit will grow in us a trust in you a confidence that only you can give that you are faithful that you can be trusted and that whether our days are are dark and discouraging or whether we feel like we don't have a care in the world that Lord you are able to meet us where we are we ask your blessing, Lord, over the morning offering and over this day. Make this offering to you now in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And congregation, you may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Between Acts chapter 6 and chapter 8, we learn about the first great persecution of the church by a stoning of a disciple named Stephen. Scattered by the threat of imprisonment and death, many Christians chose to take their, choose to take their ministry out of Jerusalem and into the surrounding countryside. These same leaders of the early church discover that not only does the message of Christ touch the hearts of their own Jewish people, but the gospel has the power to change everyone who would listen, including some of the most unlikely of people. This morning, our scripture reading concentrates on one unlikely man. The scripture reading this morning comes from Acts chapter 8, 9 through 13, and 18 through 24. Now, for some time, a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great, and all the people, both high and low, gave him attention and exclaimed, this man, is in the, this man is the divine power known as the great power. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his magic. But when they believed Philip as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptized. And he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles that he saw. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability, so that everyone on whom I may lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Peter answered, May your money perish with you, because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry, because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive you for, such, for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Then Simon answered, 
Pray to the Lord for me so that nothing you have said may happen to me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Friends, the title of my message this morning is Half Hearted. When word reached the apostles in Jerusalem after the scattering of the church, they heard that the people in Samaria had embraced and responded to the gospel message. And so Peter and John left Jerusalem and went to Samaria to be there with Philip. Among the first believers, the first new believers in Christ is this man named Simon, who is known as a practitioner of magic. And he heard the gospel and believed. The people in Samaria speak of him and say, in Acts 8, verses 10 through 11, This man is the divine power known as the great power. The Samaritans followed Simon the sorcerer because he had amazed them for a long time with his magic. Now, friends, before we go any further, if we are to have a biblical worldview, a biblical understanding of the world, we must recognize that there is power and that this power can take the form of power in the natural world and power in the supernatural. In the natural world, we can all think about and reflect on ways that humanity has come up with uh, to generate energy. We burn coal, we burn oil, uh, we have solar collectors, we harness the power of wind and we harness the power of water. In the natural world, power can take a lot of different forms. But in the supernatural world, there's only two forms of supernatural, two sources of supernatural power. One is God and the other is the devil. Um, and so for us to look at and to consider the difference between the two, if we were to make a comparison, and first of all, this is the time of the year where if you turn on the TV, there's, there's that much more uh, around this time of the year, around October, uh, we see played on television and available in uh, lots of different streaming services all of the different hocus-pocus kinds of things to do with evil and with the supernatural. Hollywood has built the devil up to be great and powerful and scary. But if we were to make a comparison between the power of the devil and the power of God, it would be like comparing a single lit match to the sun and saying, well, they're both powerful because both are sources of heat. But there is no comparison between the power of God and the power of Satan. All that we can say is, is that when someone is operating in the supernatural, the source of their power only comes from either God or the devil. Simon has gone from being a practitioner of magic to hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ, hearing the gospel preached. And the scripture tells us that he responded in faith to uh, the gospel, that Simon had lived there among the Samaritans. He had a following among the Samaritans. But now he sees how people's lives are being changed. And in the preaching of the gospel, Acts chapter 8 verse 13 says this about Simon. That Simon himself believed and was baptized. This man who was once a sorcerer saw real power at work and heard the truth and made a profession of faith. And not only made a profession of faith, but also wanted to receive, along with the other new believers, a ba uh, 
water baptism as well. And the title of my message this morning is Half Hearted. Because these 12 verses here in the New Testament give us a picture of what a man's life looks like when he's only made a half-hearted commitment, a half-hearted commitment of faith to, uh, to life, to life with Jesus. And these 12 verses are important because they also show us the consequences of a commitment that is only a half-hearted commitment. Today, within the church, 2023, there is a widespread temptation in the church to explain away people that are inconsistent about their life of faith. Um, we have reduced in so many ways in our life of faith everything about the Christian life down to, well, has someone made a profession of faith? Have they been to a crusade? Have they responded to an altar call? Have they walked the aisle? Have they knelt in prayer? Have they perhaps shed a few tears? Have they made a profession of faith? And following that profession of faith, have they received water baptism? And that is the starting place for where our life of faith begins, that we recognize that Jesus is the Son of God. We recognize uh, that He did sacrifice His life upon the cross and was raised from the dead to deliver us from our sins. But the profession of faith is just where our life of faith with Christ begins, not where it ends. And what we see here is we look at the rest of Acts chapter 8, verse 13. It says, Simon himself believed and was baptized, and he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles that he saw. So here is Simon. He's a new believer, and his heart has been moved not by the signs and wonders, but it has first been moved to faith because he hears the preaching of the gospel, believes in his heart that Jesus is the Son of God, makes a profession of faith, and receives baptism. But then he starts watching, watching Philip. The scripture says that he follows Philip everywhere, and he is astonished by the miracles and signs and wonders that he sees. Philip, who has only known the power of the devil, is now seeing what God can do in and through not only Philip, but also Peter and John. And Simon's imagination is suddenly stirred by what he has seen. And in his limited understanding, in his half-hearted commitment, Simon sees what Philip and Peter and John are doing, sees how the Samaritan people are receiving healing of their diseases. They are receiving deliverance from demonic spirits. They are having their hearts and lives changed. And Simon is watching as the people who once followed him are now at least as far as he's looking at it, everybody's following Philip and Peter and John around now. And this sparks something in Simon's mind. Because before Simon became a Christian, before Simon made a profession of faith in Jesus Christ, the scripture says before Simon was a Christian, what was Simon known for? Sorcery, Simon the Sorcerer. He was known for great displays of magic power. And he saw what the apostles were doing. And he said, I got to get in on this. The scripture says in Acts 8, verses 18 and 19, when Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money. 
and said, Give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Now, so there are some in the church today who would be tempted to say at the moment that Simon starts trying to play, let's make a deal with the apostles. Hey, look, look, I will give you this money. Let's barter. Let's trade. Let's make a deal. I want to be able to do this too. I want to be able to lay hands on somebody and pray for them and for them to receive the Holy Spirit. And what Simon is thinking about is Simon is he has not forgotten what he was. And some people in the church would say in this moment, oh, that sorcerer guy, he was faking it the whole time. Simon's not really a Christian. Simon really didn't make a profession of faith. That's not real. And when we, in the life of the church in the here and now, we see other people who have made professions of faith in Christ themselves, and they, in the the language of eastern North Carolina, we say they have backslidden. They have slidden back into some old sinful habit. And we are tempted to say of those people who return to their sins, oh, they were never really Christians. They didn't, they didn't really make a profession of faith. They weren't really serious about Jesus. But see, here's the thing, folks. The reason why Simon the Sorcerer's story matters so much is because what the testimony of the book of Acts says is we can't use this excuse for Simon returning to his sin. Simon became a Christian. Acts 8.13 says, Simon himself, what was that word? And was what? Yes. Believed and was baptized. There's no asterisk in there. Simon faked it because he was trying to make some extra money or he was trying to earn people's favor. No, his profession of faith was a genuine profession of faith. But in his new faith in Christ, Simon has not forgotten his past. Believing in Jesus Christ has not erased the memory of the life that he once enjoyed. And see, folks, for as much as the people of God will try to say, and yes, is sin destructive? Absolutely. Will sin cost us our immortal soul? Yes, indeed. Are there consequences for our sin in this life and the next? Absolutely. But sin still has an appeal because if it didn't, people wouldn't do it. We wouldn't fall into sin if it was not tempting in its quality. And Simon loved all the attention that he was receiving when he was a sorcerer. And so he saw the gift of God at work and he thought he could buy it. But Simon has received, according to Acts 8.13, Simon has received the same grace of God by faith in Jesus Christ that Peter and John received. Simon received the same grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ that Billy Graham received, that Mother Teresa received. Simon was like, is like, Every Christian who has ever believed that God would be satisfied with just a half-hearted commitment. And folks, we are surrounded by a world that thinks that God will be satisfied with a half-hearted commitment. Oh yes, yes you can be a Christian and you can continue to have sex with anyone that you want to have sex with. Of course you can be a Christian and watch all the internet pornography that you want to watch. Yes, you can be a Christian and smoke marijuana and drink alcohol until you pass out on the floor. 
Why, of course. And folks, we live in a world that is tempted to say that a half-hearted commitment is enough. And that's certainly what Simon believed. Simon believed that he could be a Christian and that there would still be room for him to practice magic. But if our thought today is to come to God and say, Lord, let's make a deal. Let's make a deal, God. I know I, know I don't have enough money. I, I know I don't have enough money to, to buy you off, God. But what if I said, Lord, I will give you half my heart. 50% of, of my heart, God, it's all yours. God, think about it. 50% of anything is a lot. 50% is a, is, is a lot, is plenty. If that's where our hearts and minds are, are going this morning, do we believe in our hearts that we can say, Lord, I will be obedient occasionally. Lord, I promise when, when November 4th gets here, I'm going to be ready to serve barbecue, God. I am going to serve barbecue. I'm going to slice cake. I am going to bust tables. And when it's over, I'm even going to be one of the people that stays and mops the floor and sweeps up. You know that's a real popular chore anyway. Those of you that have participated in our fall barbecue know we are always awash in church members that are saying, oh, yeah, we want to clean up. Can we clean up? Let's wash some dishes. Come find out, folks. We say, we say, Lord, I will do something nice at least once or twice a week. And God, I promise that I'll come to church when it gets closer to Christmas and then I'll make sure that I'm around, you know, Palm Sunday, Easter. I'll be there. And folks, if we think, if we think that this is the way that we can deal with God, that we can try to negotiate with God about our future and our life of faith, then what we need to consider is what the Apostle Peter tells Simon. If your bargain is with God, Lord, you can have half my heart. Listen to what Peter says to Simon. Peter answered, and this is Acts 8, verses 20 and 21. Peter answered, may your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. And folks, you could substitute in there. Because you thought you could buy the gift of God with time. Because you thought you could buy the gift of God with good deeds. Because you thought you could buy the gift of God if you would give some money to the church. Or you would do something nice. Or you would volunteer for something occasionally. God, I will give you three days out of the week. God, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. That's pretty good. And folks, if that's what you think, Peter says, may your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Now notice, nowhere in there is Peter saying that Simon is not a Christian. What he is making clear is, in fact, that Simon is a believer in Jesus. Because look at how he continues. Peter says in Acts 8, 22 and 23, to Simon he gives these directions. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Folks, we think about the great power of God and the great mercy of God to forgive us, to transform our hearts and lives. And it does begin with a profession of faith. It does begin with saying, yes, you are God, and Lord, I am not. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. 
And as we pray that prayer, our transformation in terms of our relationship with God is an immediate transformation. We receive forgiveness of our sins. We receive the great gift and promise of eternal life. In this moment, God has worked a change in Simon's heart and life. He has freed him from sin. He has broken the chains. He has opened the prison door. What's different is, is that Simon has not forgotten his past. Simon has not forgotten the man that he was. And so even in his freedom from sin, even in his release from captivity, it's like he's just standing there. Jail cell door is open, chains are gone, his feet, and he's just staying there, remaining a captive. And for us, instead of trying to live our life halfway, half-hearted, in our commitment of faith to the Lord, we have a decision to make, folks. We have a decision to make that when we realize the inconsistencies in our life, how are we going to react? Because look, Simon could have gone right back at Peter. Because let's face it, Peter absolutely blasts Simon. You have, your, you have no part in this ministry. Your heart is not right before God. He lays it all out there. And Simon could have responded by getting mad. He could have gotten all puffed up. He could have bowed up. Peter, you want a, you want a piece of me? Ah, you're talking mighty tough, Peter. Let's talk about you. Yeah, you think I'm a sinner? You think, you think that I'm on the outs with God? Look, you denied Jesus three different times, Peter. Look at all the things that are wrong in your life. Look at all that your life is a mess, and you're going to stand here and lecture me about what's wrong with my life? Go away. But that's not actually what Simon does. Because even though Peter blows him away in his inconsistency, in his half-heartedness, in his life where he is trying to play, let's make a deal with God, and Peter tells him that, that the judgment is coming. And that God will not play, let's make a deal. God will not be satisfied with half of you. How much of us does God want? Yeah. Now look, that's, that's a safe answer. All. He wants all of us. That's a safe answer just like, you know, at children's church or in Sunday school. You know, what's, what's the right answer to every question, Sunday school teacher? Jesus, there, yes, that's right. Jesus is the right answer. It's the safe answer for just about any question that you get asked in church. But when Simon responds to Peter, telling him that God will not make a deal with him, God will not settle with him, God will not negotiate with him, instead of making excuses for his half-hearted commitment, in Acts chapter 8, verse 24, the scripture says, Then Simon answered, Pray to the Lord for me, so that nothing you have said may happen to me. Friends, may we be wary in this world for anybody trying to package up the gospel and say, Oh yes, you can love Jesus and you can love your sin. Folks, they've been trying that for years. God will not be satisfied with less than a wholehearted commitment. And any presentation of the gospel that says, yes, you can love Jesus and you can love your sin, 
at the same time. That's not going to work, folks. God is a jealous God. He wants all of you. He loves all of you. He loves us so much that he has made a way for us to be in right relationship with him. Right relationship with him begins where we say, Lord, my way, my standards, and I'm just putting the Bible down just so I can wave my hands around a little more, that, that when we say, Lord, my way has to be important. My way, my thoughts, my opinions have to be considered too. I've read the Bible several times. My opinion is not in there. God's is. God's standard is holiness. His promise is good. His mercies are new every morning for a people who still struggle with sin, still deal with temptation, still live in a world where we are surrounded by people with all sorts of conflicting views and opinions and attitudes. His love for us is so great that he will find a way, if we will trust him, to bring us through and to preserve not half of us for eternity, but all of us, if we will make our offering to him. Or if we will say when we doubt, when we, dis when we are discouraged, when we find ourselves back in sin, perhaps you need to find somebody and say, pray for me. Pray for me because I want to be more like Jesus and less like my past. I want to be more like you, Lord. May we continue to encourage one another with the great hope and promise of the uncompromising and magnificent kingdom of God and to know that we can have a place there with him. Friends, will you pray with me? Lord, be at work in our hearts. You know us, God. You know the part of us that we would be terribly embarrassed for anyone else to know. The secrets that we long to keep hidden or we find ourselves making a lot of excuses for. Lord, help us to know that you know all of our secrets and you still love us. And Lord, may we find faith to believe that there's not a single one that you cannot change all that we have, that you're not willing to be at work in us to bring us into right relationship with you. And Lord, be at work in our hearts and lives this day. In Jesus' name, amen. And friends, I want to extend to you an invitation that as we come to our, our closing hymn, a profound and simple question from a very old hymn. Are ye able? And friends, if you want to trust God in a new way, or you want Him to work in your heart and life this morning, there is always an invitation to come and kneel and pray. But friends, let's stand and join together in singing hymn number 530, Are Ye Able?
friends, our, our gospel quartet here, gentlemen, come join me. These friendly guys right here. We're not about to have a here. Because <laughs> that would not, no, that would not be a joyful or happy occasion. But I tell you what I appreciate is, these are, these are men who, like each one of you, have gifts, have talents. And whether you consider yourself to be the sort of person that anybody would want to get together and listen to, God has a calling for you and a place for you. And in considering our closing hymn, Are Ye Able? There's, if I'm being honest, are ye able, said the master, and my heart says, no, I don't think so, God. I don't really think I can be the man that you've called me to be or do the things that you've called me to do. I'm not sure if I can be the, the leader of the church or uh, the shepherd of the sheep. I'm not sure if I'm doing a great job on any given day of being a husband or a dad um, or a, a driver or, you know, any of the different things that I do around here. But thanks be to God, if we're willing to admit the things that we can't do to the Lord, He will provide for us. He will enable us by the power of His Holy Spirit to be the people that He has called us to be. And that is why we will someday be able to celebrate with the Divine Street Quartet this marvelous choral benediction. Gentlemen. I'm going to tell you about the coming of the judgment. Fare thee well, fare thee well. I'm going to tell you about the coming of the judgment. Fare thee well, fare thee well. There's a better day of coming. Fare thee well, fare thee well. There's a better day of coming. Fare thee well, fare thee well. In that great getting up morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. In that great getting up morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. When you see the lightning a flashing, fare thee well, fare thee well. When you hear the thunder a crashing, fare thee well, fare thee well. When you see the stars a falling, fare thee well, fare thee well. When you hear the chariots calling, fare thee well, fare thee well. In that great getting up morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. In that great getting up morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. When you see the lightning flashing, when you hear the thunder crashing, when you see the stars are falling, when you hear the chariots calling, good news, good news, chariots coming, good news, good news, chariots coming, so glad, so glad, chariots coming, I don't want to be left out. There's a long white robe in the heavens, I know. Long white robe in the heavens, I know. Long white robe in the heavens, I know. I say good news. Good news, chariots coming. Good news. Good news, chariots coming. So glad. So glad, chariots coming. And I don't want to be left out. And that great again in the morning. Fairly well. Fairly well. And that great again in the morning. Fairly well. Fairly well. And that great again in the morning. Fairly well. Fairly well. Great getting up morning, fairly well, fairly well. Friends, go with God's blessing. Amen and amen. Thank you.